Welcome to Face to Face. This is a show about change and what's next. It's a show that asks questions and peels back the layers of our average everyday experience and goes beyond scratching the surface. We interview people doing incredible things who are making a difference around the globe. Join me as we listen in and get one step closer to understanding that big ideas shared create collaboration. Collaboration can inspire community and communities create social change. I'm David Peck and this is Face to Face. So my next guest is Murad Zawi, and we talk about his new film, The Forgiven, which was playing at the Toronto International Film Festival this year as a gala presentation. And I was able to get to see it with Elizabeth, my wife, at, a, at, a, at one of the drive-in presentations, which was a whole lot of fun and uh, fascinating uh, COVID-like experience uh, at the Toronto Film Festival this year. And I'm so looking forward to being back face-to-face next year. Let's hope that the, that's the case. Murad was uh, one, one of my favorite guests this year at the film festival. He's he's so kind. He's so generous. There's a there's a warmth and a and a hospitality to to him and 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 his his demeanor, not only in the film and the character that he plays in The Forgiven, but also uh, in our interview. And and I think you're going to really enjoy uh, that about this conversation. This film, The Forgiven, uh, Jessica Chastain, Ray Fiennes, uh, Christopher Abbott, Matt Smith, uh, just stellar performances from from some of these actors, some of my favorite actors actually uh, of all time. And this is a, a this is a film, it's, it's a parable, it's a, it's a fable. And Murad and I talk a great deal about that and how these types of stories point to greater truths. And they, they, they reveal things about the human condition that are that we sometimes don't unpack you know, in our daily lives and, and, and in our conversations and in the people we meet. And, and this is one of the things why I find so fascinating about film. And it's this the, the truth that we find embedded within the story. And sometimes those truths are revealed to us uh, you know, down the road. So we talk a lot about the, the incremental change and, and just coming to a better understanding little by little. Uh, we talk about others and about being in others, another's presence and, and, and how we need to acknowledge others. We need to listen. Sometimes we just need to step back and listen. And, and Murad talks a great deal about, about his character in this film, about how, how idealistic uh, uh, he, he is and was and how he was always in, in a place where he was respecting other people's ideas and particularly uh, husband and wife played by Jessica Chastain and Ray Fiennes in this film. And so so we see this character leading us through, and I was reminded of Virgil in, in Dante's Divine Comedy, leading us through this story and, and, and bringing us to a, a better understanding. And we talked a lot about Murad's uh, history as an actor. He's, the, he's, he's, uh, he's got a face that you're going to recognize for sure and you might not remember where you saw it, but I'm so looking forward to you stepping into our interview uh, today. And, you know, we talked a lot about uh, about access and, and about the journey as well, as, as much as we talked about the film, The Forgiven. So coming soon, I would imagine, to a theater near you, you're going to want to uh, check it out, The Forgiven. Uh, coming right up, Murad uh, Zawi on, on Face to Face, and, and what a pleasure it was to have him. I think this will be the second of many interviews, about 14 interviews I did this year at the Toronto International Film Festival. They're coming up over the next uh, several months. And don't forget, davidpecklive.com, face-to-facelive.ca. They'll all get you to the same place. Uh, you can find out more information about my writing and my speaking, maybe pick up a copy of Real Changes Incremental. But also, you'll see the library of uh, interviews and podcasts that I've been doing over the past, I guess, about eight years. We're coming up on 600. Sign up for the newsletter. Please uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel if that's where you're listening or, or like us there. And wherever you're enjoying podcasts, uh, we would so appreciate a thumbs up or a review. It helps us in a, in a big way. Mediate us if you can. Forward this off to family and friends and um, stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe too where you listen to podcasts. That's always super helpful as well. Coming right up, uh, one of my favorite interviews at the Toronto Festival, uh, Toronto International Film Festival this year uh, about the film The Forgiven with Murad Zawi coming right up. Stay tuned. Well, welcome to Face to Face. We are joined by a very special guest here with us today. Uh, I actually don't know where he's calling in from, but we have Murad Zawi here with us to talk about uh, his new film, The Forgiven. Murad, thank you for taking the time to hang out with me on Face to Face today. Really, really thrilled that you're here. I mean, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm excited. I'm happy. I'm thrilled and I'm honored to be here. And I am in LA. <laughs> you're in LA. Okay, there you go. So, yeah. so is that where you is that where your call home? 
Yes, for the past six years, LA became home. Uh, I got here for an audition on July 13, uh, July 3rd, 2013. It was supposed to be for, to audition for the lead for an, an unentitled a TV pilot for HBO directed by Steve McQueen. And yeah, that didn't happen, but I was lucky enough to be signed by um, this management company called Media Talent Group, and I stayed. And you stayed. And, 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 and it's funny, there's a little anecdote that I would love to, to share with you. Yeah, please. Uh, so at the time, my manager only repped huge names. So the names were Angelina Jolie, Nicole Kidman, Amber Heard, Kate Beckinsale, Billy Bob, and myself. A few years later, uh, at his birthday, I was like, I know that you don't sign actors and you only have big names. Why did you sign me back then? And he said, yeah, I just said yes to get you off my back. I didn't think I would stay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you'd stay. And, yeah, and now you're there and you've, got, and, and you've got a couple dogs and a couple cats too as well. You're exactly, yeah, yes, build, yes. Building a big family. Nicely done. <laughs> Nicely so done. Free. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no question. So, so, hey, tell tell our listeners a little bit. Uh, uh, I've, I've I've been at the I've been coming to the festival forever, but I've been covering it for about I guess about eight years now, and I'm coming up on 600 published interviews. So, I mean, it's just wow. it's it's insane. I mean, I think the first festival I had 35 interviews and there are shots of me somewhere running through the streets of Toronto from one interview to the next with cables and microphones around my neck. It's just, it was, it's been crazy over the years, but I always love it. Cause I get to meet people like you. I get to watch films like the forgiven and, and have conversations that are honestly, they, I just, sometimes I don't know where they're going to go, you know? Yes. And, yes. and, and I, I think I can say, I always have a great time. Mm -hmm. And from what little I know of you and what little I've read and your performance in the film, I get the sense from you, uh, you're a very generous guy. You, it sounds like you had a great time you, at TIFF this year. You're giving me goosebumps by saying <laughs> that. Thank you so much. Um, so my festival, first of all, I want to start with me in Canada. Yes. When I was a child, I had two posters of Newfoundland. Uh, so it was one on the top of the other and it was Newfoundland in the winter and Newfoundland in the summer. I, and it, just, it was just right in Newfoundland. I didn't know where it was. I, I didn't know if it was real. <laughs> and, we, and, and, most of us Canadians don't know if it's real either, just so you know. Yeah, okay, <laughs> and, okay. and by the way, I just alienated a portion of my listeners. Yeah. <laughs> and for me, that part, of, that part of the world, it was so beautiful, both in the, in the winter and in the summer. And for, some, for a kid like me from Casablanca, who's not used to seeing snow, and not used to seeing that much green and that much water. It seemed to me like this like magic land where mm. you lived and maybe that's where hobbits were coming from. And, and, and then I really was Canada and I always had like this romantic connection with, with Canada. That's so cool. I know. Now, now I'm getting goosebumps. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So, so just being in Canada for the first time in Toronto, and being a, a TIFF with the movie, like The Forgiven was just a chair on top. For me, just being in Canada was a huge achievement. <laughs> so you really just came to see and hang out in the city. You, exactly. Yeah, yes, you had, yeah, yeah. The heck with the film. The heck with the festival. Yeah. The no, heck no, with no, my no. career. That, that, that was important. But <laughs> for me, just, just being there and being in that country. and Yeah, it's and, cool. And yeah, it's, it's a cool thing. It's a great That's thing. That's so yeah. neat. I love that. I love that you saw it as a magic line. You know, I, many years ago, I, I've worked in uh, international, inter, international development. And many years ago, my first big overseas tour uh, trip on my own was mm -hmm. to Kenya. Uh, okay. And I was in Nairobi in a town called Eldoret. It was about four and a half, five weeks. That's pr pretty young, early twenties. And I remember trying to describe, of course, this is before smartphones and internet and yeah. all that. And I remember trying to describe to somebody snow. Yeah. And, and this person spoke great English. I didn't speak very, uh, Swahili at all. So, the, you know, we had to speak English, but I remember trying to describe, well, do you know what I mean by ice? Like, you know, like, with, could, like if you were to shave ice, that's what snow's like, you know? Yes. And, yeah. and it's just, anyway, it's cool that that was something that you felt drawn to in a romantic yes. way. I, I, I love <laughs> that. Well, welcome to Canada. Welcome to Toronto. You, and I know you're back in LA, but that that's really cool. Tell me about the TIFF experience, The Forgiven. It's this huge film. Ray Fiennes, Je Jessica Chastain. I mean, the cast, it's Caleb stellar Martin, cast. Matt Smith, Chris Abbott. Crazy cast. The actual play, the father. How good was that guy? 
The performances how, in the what, film, yeah, yeah, are just remarkable. How good was he? And and this is it was our third time working together, and that was the best performance of his that I've ever seen. It's it was just so good, and I think it would be unfair if that man doesn't get at least an Oscar nomination for that performance. I, uh, maybe I, I'm just being biased, but what do you think? I thought that, I th well, I thought all the performances were were, mm -hmm. were excellent. I really, I really did. And uh, it, what's interesting to me about the film is, uh, and I hope, I hope it is noticed at awards time. Yeah, yes. I, yeah. I really do. The, 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 the sort of the dance for me between parable, fable, and reality yeah. was really interesting. Like near the end of the film and, and we i guess we want to be sort of careful we don't give away too much yes yes but i yes. kind of, i like the, the the transformation in in ray fines's character is is fascinating to me and and it's played so well uh and there's and there's these 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 dreamlike moments in the film and so i wasn't quite is this meant to be taken as a real world story you know what what are your thoughts on it because your character hamid is fascinating too i know i know i know i know and i, I and it's very, very interesting that you say that and, and, and you felt that way. Because when I first read the script, I was like, okay, Hamid plays the servant and he, see, he says these, like all these philosophical and smart <laughs> lines. Oh yes, yeah, we'll get but, to some of those. But who is he? Yeah, who is he? And who is he? And, and I started researching and, and I had the help of this amazing screenwriter director who actually directed a, a short film with Benedict Cumberbatch and his name is Patrick Victor Monroe um, and I sent him the script and I was like I need help because English is not my first language and 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 and, and I'm sure that I'm, even if I'm fluent I, I don't I don't I don't uh, I don't master it as, as as good as I master French for example when I read a script in French I can see like four or five layers or five, sure. four or five meanings sure. of, of, that makes of, sense. of, of uh, yeah, and it makes sense to me. So in English, I still have, I need help certain things. And, 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 and I decided to play Hami as more like an idea or an ideal than, it, than, than a person. So that's why I was like very, very still, very, very philosophical. I felt like Hamid was the audience's anchor when there were like certain things that were not acceptable, that he would speak for the audience and he would always say the right thing, even though that's not, that, 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 doesn't, that doesn't happen, especially in that part of the world where people are poor and they need those jobs. He's not gonna go and speak out against his bosses or the guests of his bosses. And, and Hamid did. So for me, Hamid was an ideal, was, was an idea of, of humanity of uh, forgiveness, of mm. um, uh, empathy. Uh, I don't really felt that, but but for me, Hamid was the moral compass. The moral compass of the piece. It's. I love. I love that you said moral compass. So so as I was, uh, it was hard to to take notes. I, I saw the film at the drive-in at Ontario Place and okay. uh, with my wife, and it was great. It was a fun experience. And but mm -hmm. but but it didn't hit me till I was going back through my notes. There's that scene, I believe, where you're holding the lantern. Yes. And for me, that was kind of, th this is Hamid's character. He's, yes. he's, he's leading us kind of through the story. Like it yeah. made me think of, uh, I don't know if you've read Dante's uh, Divine Comedy, but you know, Virgil yes. is the, Virgil's the one taking us through the story as we come yes. on these sometimes mm -hmm. horrific scenes, mm -hmm. right? Yes. yes. Uh, and and I, I really got that from you. So Moral Compass makes a lot. Oh my sense. God. I'm so, oh my God. You're, <laughs> You can't, you can't imagine how happy I am that I was able to get that message through, even though I was very still, very, uh, yeah, very still and very, yeah, very still. That's, that's, that's well, what's there. interesting is the other, the other actor who plays, I guess, your, you're kind of the My head. Assistant. Yeah. yeah. His, yes. his, his approach was much was was just it wasn't as compassionate as yours no, which i thought was no, really interesting no. that the two of you and yes. i think it's a testament to your abilities as yes. actors to show that you were clearly more compassionate you had your owners and your employers in mind yes. but you were also concerned about others too and i think yes i think yes. i think that's a beautiful thing because i think that's kind of what this what john the director is doing i think with this film I think is positioning positioning us in the audience to say, yes. okay, how would we respond? How are we going to respond? Would we ever go and exploit in the same way 
that yes. these characters have done. Can, can you talk a little bit about that, Murad? Yes, of course. And and and, and I'm, of course, when we're talking about Hamid, and for me, Hamid. He, he, he was respecting everyone's differences and flaws and shortcomings. Yeah, it's good. And, 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 and for me, like I said, the, the reason why I played him not as a person, but more of a concept or an, or an ideal, it's because he was neither on the natives camp nor on the Western visitors camp. I feel like he was the bridge between the two. Right, right. Yeah. So when, 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 <clears throat> I don't want to say too much. But when, when my assistant does the thing that he does with the glass, I don't react. I just let him, I'm just like monitoring what goes on. I, so I let him do his thing. And then when Rafe comes back, the scene with, between me and Rafe on a one with the beer. So even though Hamid is very religious, very, uh, yeah, he brings him the beer. Well, what I loved is that you clearly were, were waiting for him. You yes. Were, the, the attention to detail, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The, yes. the assumption there is just, it's wonderful. It almost <laughs> makes, makes, well, this is, we're back to kind of the fable again, right? Like, yes, who, exactly. who, yeah. is, who is this guy? Who is this guy? So, I mean, yeah, he's, he's a fable. Uh, and and sometimes, and it could be like, yeah, it could be like just in everyone's imagination, probably. It, it, it's possible that he could be not even real, but he is real, obviously, but it's possible that he was just, this like angel, like the good angel on the right side that does, does the right things and just monitors and doesn't judge anyone and and respects everyone's differences and philosophies and way of life. I love that you are given the 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 uh, the parables. Um, I'm just trying to see if I can um, uh, open your door to a good day. Uh, was, was yeah, open it, but and and and, and uh, prepare yourself for a bad one. For 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 a bad one. Um, come on, help me out also here. The- the um, tongue has no bones, but it crushes all the same. It's so good. The tongue has no bones, but it crushes very, very old testament. You know, yes. it, there's there's like I, I couldn't help but think of Proverbs, you know. Yes, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and all the Proverbs, and and he also tells like um a woman without shame, it's like a golden ring in a pig's snout. In a pig's snout, yeah. Uh, uh what else? And it was like little by little, you can enter a camel in a jar. Uh, yeah, yeah, something yeah, about right. couscous. No, no, that was that was a that was, was a miss. Was, was, was that something? It was not any couscous. <laughs> so that's a very old and it's a, a Berber uh, quote mm. saying. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Simik, simik, asik shum oram tegdurt. So little by little, you can get a whole camel in a little jar. So patience. So, so- so patience, perseverance, patience. focus, intention, mm-hmm. all those things come into play. So, so yeah. piece by piece, little by piece. little. Yeah, little. Oh, by that's little. so good. That's so good. <laughs> Do you find, how's this? Let's cross over to your real, the real world here. Do you find, yes. you strike me as a very positive person. Do you, do you find that this, that, hmm, those types of sayings, that kind of, that kind of wisdom, does, yes. does that like, help? Yes. Yeah. Does it, does it drive you? Does it move you forward? Yes, of course. Um, so for a kid like me, who was born in Casablanca, Morocco, from not a very wealthy family, to think or just dream of one day being able to speak English, mm. live in the U.S., and being in a Hollywood movie, it's like a kid from, or like you, dreaming about becoming an alien and living in Jupiter. Just being able to get a visa and visit Canada or the US, it's a great achievement. It's not, it's not accessible to, it's, it's inaccessible to 80% of Moroccans, actually. And I, I, the journey has been long. It's been tough. And yeah, and little by little, you enter the camel into the jar. Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> good. It's lo- uh, so good. How what was what was it like working alongside? I mean, these are these are mega stars, and 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 I've met a few over the years. Not many. I've mm-hmm. interviewed a few over the years. Uh, yes. It and it can be super intimidating. Did did you find that they were generous in return? Uh, oh my god, yes. Oh my god, yes. Uh, it, it, so my my first two or three weeks of uh, filming, most of my scenes were both with Matt Smith and Jessica, but mostly Jessica. And she was so generous, so welcoming, so not so not movie star life on set. 
and and there is and and I think like Jessica is more beautiful on the inside than she's on the outside. Matt Smith, I was freaking out about the scene where I was saying the tongue has no more, but it crushes all the same because I was doing my thing and and then they were arguing and stuff and and I had the illusion that there was only one good way to say a line mm. and I had to find that way. Right. And I saw Matt Smith work and he would like he would do five six takes same scene but five or six different way of 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 giving the line or of of doing the scene and they were all fabulous they were all amazing and i went to i was like oh my god i just learned something amazing from you and and i did the same thing with that line i was like so what do you think did what <laughs> because i changed basically my 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 uh, my style of work and i started like copying what matt smith was doing. <laughs> Right. And, and Matt Smith also was helpful and he was giving me like always the, the right words at all time because it, it, it is in, in, intimidating. You don't want to be the guy that's going to screw up in a scene with Jessica Chastain, Matt Smith, and, and Ray Fine. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's true. I can imagine. Yeah. You start and, to fumble your lines, not, not where you want to go. Exactly. And, and, and the other thing also, I've worked a lot before doing The Forgiven. This is my 73rd role. Uh, I've worked with. I, I, I worked yeah, with. no, you've got an impressive CV, CV, man. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. yeah. And for those of us who are, or those of you who are listening out there, check check uh, check out the IMDb profile. <laughs> impressive. I worked with two Oscar-winning directors. I worked with with um, Hugh Hudson, uh, *Chariots of Fire*, uh, best mo- Oscar of uh, best movie in 1984. I worked I with Colin. She won best foreign film in 2001 for *Nora in Africa*. Uh, I did Italian, I did German, I did British, and I even shot a, uh, a comedy, a, a Czech comedy in 2011 called Liba Seco Diablo. So I've, I've, I've been around and and I've been struggling when I first came to Hollywood and it took me five years before I booked The Forgiven. And I and after uh, after filming The Forgiven, I realized that was a blessing that it took me that much time before I booked it because when I first came here, I was kind of spoiled, and being on set was, uh, for me, just another day on uh, another day at the office. So I think if I had booked this role four or five, or three, four or five years ago, I wouldn't have been as good because after spending five years of auditioning day in and day out, hearing no's, rejection, that made me realize that being on a set was a privilege. It's not another day at the office. Yeah, so it's... I was so dedicated. I was so. I was 200% on, 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 on that movie, on that set, and no distractions, no iPhones, no phones, nothing. The only things I would do when I was my day off, so I would go and run 10 miles in the desert, in the dunes, and, and study my lines and my character. And I must have read that script, I don't know, like a little bit over 100 times. Wow. I would read it all, all the time because... I don't want to be missing one single beat because for me, that was it. That's, that's it. I'm here. I've had this huge opportunity and I have to rise well, up. I, I love your attitude towards it. The, the, and the, and the dedication and your, your focus. It's really, really cool. Really, really <laughs> impressive. Can, hey, can you talk a little bit about without giving away, I guess the story and then you, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. you're, you might even be contractually obligated to n- not give away the story. <laughs> I don't know, but there's something I think really profound about, about this film and about the story and this pair, let's call it a parable. I, I, I'm yes. going to call it a parable. And it's, it's almost a warning it seems to me. And yet it's also a reminder of where we've been of all that's kind of, I don't know, wrong about that lack of bridge between the east and the west north and south north and south north and south what's what is going on why is this so difficult i mean the scene uh, well there's so many scenes at the end where um is it anwar is that his name the the at the end of the film where ray finds gets out of the jeep he he gets out of the jeep and he says to him oh i didn't even ask you your name yeah like that to me, in a nutshell, is everything that's wrong with politics, with international development, with 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 our economy. We aren't concerned about one another, and and I know that sounds kind of corny in a way, but yes. I think ultimately that is one of the uh, the clearly one of the subtexts of this film. Yes, 
So here, here's, here's something that personally in my everyday life bothers me. Uh, it, it, so in Morocco, we have this thing. Everybody says hello to everyone. If you know someone, you walk by them, you stop, you shake hands, and you say hello. When you leave, you say goodbye. When you arrive to a table to say, to say hello to a friend of yours, if there's like 10 people, you shake everyone's hands and you introduce yourself. I'm not seeing this here. Here, when there's someone that comes and you're like, let's say there's only three people, me, a friend, and another friend that comes and say hello. He will talk to his friend and not even acknowledge my presence. And I never understood that. Uh, I was living, I was living in a building and, and there was this neighbor of, of mine that I kind of liked and we were kind of friendly. And he left without saying goodbye. And I, I didn't like it. I felt it annoyed. It was like it, he could have just sent me text. How, how hard would it have been to say goodbye? Exactly. So I, I don't get it. I, I don't get it. And that scene, like you said, summarizes of what's wrong with with the West, I think. Um, well, there's and, and there's such a what I love about and this is one of the reasons why I think Ray Fiennes is one of the greatest actors of all time but uh and there's so many of course but I I, I have a particular fondness for him and a couple of the roles that he, he's he, been in he's, he, he's he's a master and I want to add something about Ray yeah please uh watching him as a fan he's of course magical he's a master but when working with him and when our faces are this close. And when you're able to see what's going on in his eyes with your, with your eyes, it's, 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 it's another level. Yeah. Is it comp complicated? Nuanced? Is that what you were trying to say? It, it, it's, it's complicated. It's nuanced, but at the same time, he's not doing anything. Mm. But there was this intensity, this magic that he's able to create. And, and he can be this, this mean, asshole I'm oh, sorry, oh, oh uh, and then yeah, and then absolutely. you can see this and then if you just cut the sound there was nothing i mean you can see the two faces and yep, you're like yep. okay it's the same face what are you talking about but there is something happening and well at the end of, in, in, in in murad in that sequence the compassion and the 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 acknowledgement of his own arrogance was, yes was realized when he said yes. oh I'm getting, I'm actually getting goosebumps now again. And when he says, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't even, so, I didn't even ask you your name. Like, I'm so sorry, you yes. know, like yeah. he didn't have to say that. And there was this beautiful right. moment between the two of them. You yeah. know, there really was, I have no idea. I had no idea at that point what was coming. I didn't yeah. know what to expect. I didn't know where the story of the film was going, but that was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful moment. And, and I he, think and he, oh, and he, when he comes out of the car, there was that moment between my character and his character. When he realizes that I cared for him, but the others didn't. Do you, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. And he couldn't, and he couldn't see it, and he yeah. couldn't see it. Right? He had to go before. That's right. That's what I mean. Before yeah. he could, he could yeah. see it now. Yeah, he got it now that you were yeah. willing to go the extra mile for him. Yeah, but but up until that but point, not, for whatever reason, for whatever we're reason, we're not enemies. We're not. It's not because we're browns and you're white that. We hate each other. It's not a. Um, I saw a, a video that was disturbing to me. So this Palestinian man was sitting with his computer in a very uh, in um in a in an art uh, in a Orthodox Jewish Orthodox neighborhood in Israel, and he was in his computer. And this little girl comes to him, and he started talking to her in Hebrew. And he asked her a question. He was like, "So, what do you think about Arabs?" And and she never met one. She only heard stories and and she thought that the Arabs, the others, were not even human. And she started like describing an entity a being that was not human. And then all of a sudden he was like, Do you think that I'm an Arab? And she said, No, 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 no. The Arabs are monsters. And he said, No, but I am. And she was shocked that he was just another human being like her. And then her dad came and they started the conversation. And I saw this beautiful moment of humanity. Mm. Just, just start a conversation. Just let's talk to one another. Just we all want the same thing. We all want safety for our children and, and loved ones and live peacefully and happily. But then again, the politics and and all that stuff get involved. And Matt, <laughs> Matt, you know, Matt, uh, that's a great story, by the way. Matt's Matt's Smith's character is so interesting because he seems to know 
he seems to understand he's in the wrong and yet he does it anyway. You know, like he has these moments where he, even some of the interaction with you, you know, in your character, yeah. he kind of goes, oh, well, well, yeah, no, I know this is where, oh, well, I like the weather here kind of. And that's what, you know what I mean? Like, it's almost like. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to disagree with you because yeah, go. I feel like he. So, for example, every time there was a problem, I go to him and there was always like a. An aparté between me and, and, uh, and the character played by Matt Smith. And I always, I know that he understands and he knows and, and he always like reacts and, 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 and he knows, but I feel like he doesn't want to like try to educate or, or rain on his guest parade because he knows that they're going to be deaf and not um, receptive to what he has to say. So basically he just also let them be, let them be, let them be, and okay, let them have fun, but I know better, and I'm here to also, so he also, I feel like him and Hamid are pretty similar, we, we even have a line in common, his name is Driss. Right, yes, it's true, it's true, well, that's kind of what I mean, like, he doesn't, he sort of, he's the, uh, clearly the white western middle-aged sort of male who's come to kind yeah. of exploit this mm -hmm. desert palace to some degree, yeah. and, the, and the locals, and yet he seems to care a he cares. Little bit. Yeah. He, cares. Yes. he cares a lot, yeah. maybe. Yeah. And, and you're yeah. right. You're right. That whole that's a whole other bit of business that, that his yeah. name is Driss. It's a beautiful moment. Yeah. And we, we had that both. both we, we both had that line. And. Uh, yeah. And he always like asked him to do the right thing when he tells Rafe, take give him some money. It's just you're not going to ask. But and I said the same thing. So he. It, so so basically, like like the same scene when when I let my 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 assistant do his thing and I don't judge him, and and I let him do his thing. So I feel like the character played by Matt Smith does the same thing. He let them also do their thing, and that's right. Okay, the, fair fair enough. Anyone, yeah, no, that and, makes and sense. Monitors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, yeah. So if you were describing, I, I'd love to know a bit a bit about the Q&As you guys were a part of for the film and, and what some of the interviews you've, you've had where they've gone, but how do you describe this film to people who know nothing about it? I'd love to know. So, uh, <laughs> like you said, I'm going to just, I think we've said, we've said a lot already. We've said a lot. But I'm, 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 I'm going to say this. So the movie is... So it's this beautiful story of clash of civ civilization or civilization. civilizations, yep. Civil civilizations. Civilization. Civilization. Yeah, okay, Civilization. thank you. Uh, that takes place in this beautiful, beautiful villa in southern Morocco in the, in, 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 in the Atlas. So it's a ma it's the and then there was an act, a car accident uh, due to drunk driving involving the couple played by Jessica Chastain and Ray Fiennes. And that, that car accident will have a lot of repercussions and reverberations on both the locals and the, and the visitors. But the movie is much more than just that. And I can't wait for the audience to discover it for itself. Yeah, it's so good. So good. Little, little by little, piece by piece. Piece by piece. You yeah. can enter. I'm all in a jar. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. What a pleasure have, having you on today uh, on the show, Murad. Tell me what's what's next for you. Uh, have you got have you what? got a long list of things? It's a long list of things, but the the main thing is uh, I have another movie coming out in, uh, in November, no, December first in Paris, in France, called Burning Casablanca, directed by the amazing, super talented Ismail El Iraqi, who was compared by the president of the Mostra of Venice last year, where we're in competition to Tarantino. And, and he is, without trying, that's who he is. And the movie was compared to Sailor and Lula by David Lynch. Wow. And I'm playing a character- Bur that's Burning Casablanca. Burning Casablanca. And uh, I'll ask Jane to send you a screener and maybe we can do another interview about that character and about the movie because it's completely, completely, completely different than than who Hamid is. <laughs> it's gotta be so, we gotta wrap up here in a second, but it's gotta be yes. so much fun being able to step into these characters and kind of, and then p playing this, and then, you know, six months later <laughs> playing that, like complete yes. opposite the end of the spectrum. Yes. Do, you, yes. do you, hey, 
personal question. Again, yes. I love your generosity. I love your smile. Um, do you, you find <laughs> playing those kind I of challenging smile, characters hard? Do you find that hard to step outside of this, you know? Yes, not hard to step out of it, no. But what I find, so the, the mean, evil, dangerous characters, I find that I find that hard to leave actually mm. that, 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 that those characters are kind of hard on my psyche and on my I bet. mental health and i and i realized that yeah yeah and i i i, I thought when actually used to talk about those kind of things that was a joke like ah they're just being actors right it's the big deal yeah uh, well it was the big deal and, and, yeah. and when i found myself for the first time it was in 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 a moroccan tv movie and i was playing this evil killer and in one of the scenes i was supposed to kill this young boy who was about like 10 or 11 years old and i and, and, and in the middle of the scene i just i have i have a younger brother and he just reminded me of my of my mm. baby brother at that age and i just i kept doing the scene but in my head this like this dialogue going on i was like how can you be feeling these feelings and i started like blaming myself and it took me like two or three weeks to just get the guilt out wow wow yeah it was this guilt feeling of guilt that I had inside that that was new to me. And uh, <sighs> now I'm just talking about it. <laughs> and now you're talking about, well, listen, I'm, I'm glad you do what you do because I, I got a, you know, Adam McGoyan, a Canadian director says, you know, mm -hmm. he's got so much time and love and respect for actors. And I think I, I think I, I would say the same. I, I love storytellers. I think that there is truth. Uh, there is humanity. There's relationship to be found in these these stories. And thanks for your time today. And I will never thanks forget the tongue has the tongue has no bones, no bones sir. But it crushes all the same. But it yes. crushes. I will never forget that as long as I live. <laughs> we've been we've been talking with Murad Zawi uh, about his uh, beautiful new film, uh, The Forgiven. What a, what a pleasure having you on the show today. It's been Thank a real you. the pleasure is all mine. Thank you so much. So there you have it, my interview with Murad Zawi, and I think you can get a sense for his passion and his energy as a, as an actor and, and just as a, well, as a human being. It, it, it really comes through, I think, in the conversation we had. Don't forget davidpecklive.com for more information about my writing and my speaking. You can find out uh, more about, too, my podcasting there, face-to-facelive.ca. We'll get to the same place. Please subscribe uh, to the podcast wherever you do listen. Leave us a review if you get a few moments it really won't take you long. We'd have so appreciate that. That helps in a, in a big way. Also, if you're listening to the podcast on YouTube, uh, please like the channel and give us a thumbs up. We'd so appreciate it. Don't forget to sign up for the newsletter. We don't send out too many, but it is a way for us to keep you up to date on what we're up to. Coming up on 600 interviews. Uh, I'm super excited about some of the conversations I had at TIFF this year. So look for those in the very near future. Thanks again for listening. We will see you soon.